I'm going to do a talk about managing uh, Papa with M Collective. Um, the beginning of the talk is going to just go a little bit over the architecture of M Collective, uh, a little bit of the nomenclature, and then I'm going to get into more of describing and showing what M Collective can actually do to help you manage your puppet infrastructure. Um, so my name is John Mosco. I'm JP Mosco on Twitter. I have like 17 followers. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I follow like 2,000 people, but anyway. So who am I? Um, I'm an infrastructure engineer. I work for CSC, not the big CSC, but for the other CSC, the Corporation Services Company, um, which does sound strange, I agree, but we're uh, like a company, they tell us to tell people that we're a company that helps other companies do business, so that's what we do. We incorporate other companies. I hope I'm not gonna, but I hope my, anybody from my company doesn't watch this now. Um, anyway, I'm a puppy, I've been a pub user for about two plus years. Um, you came from the CF Engine world. I've fully recovered from that. Um, I'm a puppet certified professional last year. I've been a Linux user for at least 10 plus years back in the Slackware days where I would have to like hook my phone up to my modem and download Slack over three straight days. <laughs> so if anybody remembers that, that's that was the day. And I'm also a metalhead, so if you want to talk to me about anything besides Pop It and M Collective, you know, talk to me about metal, that'd be a good conversation. Alright, so let's get into this. So what is M Collective? And that's a picture of a board cube, because anytime I heard hear the word collective, I automatically think of uh, the board cube that you know, you'll be assimilated, your technological and biological uh, entity. <laughs> but that's not what it really is. So, what M Collective really is, um, it's short for the Marionette Collective, and it's a framework that helps build parallel job execution. And it works perfectly alongside Puppet uh, to provide real time command execution. So, Puppet is really good at configuration management. You know, it's great and it focuses on single node management. So, you know, Puppet independent of a master, you can log in, you can do your changes, run Puppet Apply without a Puppet Master, and you're good to go. You know, and, and if you have your Puppet Master attached to it, it's also very good too. It'll run the runs however long you configure it, whether it's the Daemon or Autocron. And it's a very good, does a very, very good job at that. And now, orchestration, on the other hand, is the coordination and the management of multiple systems. So. If you don't feel like logging into your machines to try one-off changes, or if you want to do a little task upon all of your nodes in your infrastructure, you can use something like M Collective to orchestrate all of those tasks from a single um, administration node. And I put this caution sign up, and I'll get into this later because there's a lot of stuff in M Collective that you can do that can be uh, Damaging, I guess is a good word for it. <laughs> and also, it's, it's, it's so powerful that if you forget like the small little pieces of your command syntax, uh, you could cause a lot of problems in your infrastructure. So, just caution. <laughs> so, uh, this is the M Collective architecture. I'm going to go over this a little bit because the terminology when you start looking at the M Collective uh, documentation or on the Puppet Labs website, like the, the the terminology is a little bit different from that of Puppet. So I'm going to describe each of these pieces and compare it to Puppet. So in servers in M Collective are like your, your Puppet agents. So when M Collective refers to servers, it refers to anything like a Puppet node, anything that's running the M Collective D. Uh, the clients, there is really no equivalent to the client. It's just the node that actually controls your entire environment. And then you have your middleware, which is kind of like the Puppet Master because it's in charge of controlling your entire infrastructure. It's where the messages get sent to and broadcast out to your entire environment. Actually, not on my sleeve, so let's see this. Ah, there we go. Much, much better. Okay. Yeah, and the middleware node, the good thing about the middleware node is it can get installed on your Puppet Master for easy management of security. So if you are setting up M Collective, and you're uh, worried about the security, you can set up your middleware node as your Puppet Master and you can reuse all the SSL certificates provided by your Puppet Master. All right, so I'm gonna go into each of the little different pieces of the architecture and describe um, what, each of them, what each of them does with M Collective. So the servers are the systems that are controlled by M Collective. Like I said, they're just the nodes out in your environment that run the M Collective D. They can run Puppet Agent and the M Collective Daemon on them. Uh, they, yes. <laughs> And the puppet agent is equal to the M Collective D pretty much as far as terminology goes. 
And there are multiple agent plugins that run on your servers in order to do a lot of the tasks that mCollective provides. By, by default, mCollective is a framework to build all of this execution and remote control of your machine. So the, um, the servers actually get plugins installed on them that provide any of the functionality that you want to do with mCollective. And I'm going to give some examples later on and then do a demo of multiple plugins, show you what they look like. And they're just little Ruby uh, libraries that enable custom commands. And it's, it has a really nice API. It even has a package system built in. So if you build them, there is a mCollective plugin that will package your system up into whatever native architecture you're on. So if you're on a Red Hat box, you can actually plug, um, type one command and build all of your RPMs. And then your Puppet Master can install your agents all across the environment for you. It's really nice. And same for Debian architectures. And the clients. Uh, the clients send and receive the request to the servers. It's like the administration node. Uh, that's where the M -collect MCO command gets run on your and your client node, um, and it's the admin server for managing M Collective. If you run Puppet Enterprise, um, they put that on the Puppet Master. So you have the PE admin account that you can change to, and you can use the M Collective command. If you don't use Puppet Enterprise. You can build your own client node if you want, create the account, whatever you uh, desire. But with Puppet Enterprise, it's pretty much, I believe, restricted to the PE admin account and it's installed on the Puppet Master. If you don't want to do that, you have to. There, I think there's a little bit of work involved on getting around that if you don't want it on your Puppet Master. And this is also where the security and connector plugins live. The connector plugins basically talk to the middleware. If you use ActiveMQ or RabbitMQ as your middleware, the connector plugins, that's what they talk to. And the MCO command, like I was here. And you can do interactive usage with the MCO command or in scripts. And it's very nice in scripts, too, because you can do like your, if you do the for loops, <laughs> that Puppet always jokes about, like you can actually put mCollective commands within there to run the execution across your environment. Very nice. And this is the middleware. Hopefully, yeah. Uh, the clients and servers communicate through the middleware. That's definitely spelled wrong. It's not Active MA. It's Active MQ. That's what Puppet Labs develops. Uh, M Collective based with Active MQ. I'm not. Sh I know it supports Rabbit MQ, and you can use it. I'm not sure if they're both developed together, but I believe in the past it was mostly Active MQ. It's anything that's Stomp compatible. Okay. Yeah. Anything Stomp. Yes. Anything Stomp compatible, which is a simple text. Oriented message protocol. I have that in my, in my notes. Um, it uses a publish and subscribe system for all of its communication. So it'll actually broadcast out to every node in your environment the same message, and it will only send back those who subscribe to that message, which I will show later through the usage of uh, filters. Send and receive messages using stump. That's used to uh, the transport the messages between the clients and the servers. All right, so this is basically what the message flow looks like. It's a broadcast paradigm, so it'll go out to all the nodes in your environment. Um, they're sent from the administrator account on the client server, um, and it's broadcast to all the nodes in your environment. And each agent out in each agent is both a publisher and a subscriber to those messages. And this is basically what it looks like. So your client mm -hmm. will broadcast out to your middleware, and then all of the servers receive a message, but only the ones that are subscribed or, or get the message or the ones that respond back. Now, like I said, like later on, I'm going to show exactly how this works, so you can see. And plugins, this is like the most powerful like part of M Collective is because of the framework. You can actually build as many plugins as you desire if you have the time to write any of your uh, Ruby scripts. And I think you could also execute other commands within that as well. So you can launch Python scripts or any other uh, within the framework itself because it's just Ruby. Um, and basically, the plugins enable M Collective to execute the commands. And there are several types of plugins, but the important ones that I wanted to touch upon were just the agent plugins. And those are going to be used to extend and enhance what we control in our environments. Um, the connector plugins, they establish the link between the um, MCO client node and the middleware and then the um, servers in the middleware you know, so they can communicate properly. And the security plugins, and those all um, encrypt and decrypt all the communication within your environment. They provide the functionality. And this is just an example of some of the plugins available. The Puppet Agent plugin, uh, Service plugin, Process and Package. I'm going to give an example and show these all. All right, so this is where like the meat of my talk is. It's an integration with Puppet. 
So basically, if you use Puffman Enterprise, like I said before, it comes pre-installed and configured. So it's, it's yours to use right out of the box. No work whatsoever. Um, Puppet Labs does provide modules for the open source version of Puppet, and in my opinion, it's one of the nicest modules they have. So like the previous speaker was saying, if you want to model your uh, modules after any other than Apache and the NTP modules, which are also very nice, the, this module is very complex and very, very well written. So check that one out if you get a chance. There's a link to it. And this is really hard to read. <laughs> um, it's just an example of using the Puppet Labs M Collective module. Uh, it just shows how there's defined types for all the plugins. Uh, there's also defined types for any of the server settings. It's, it's, it's not a very complex module to use, so it just has a lot of defined types. Can everybody see that all right? No. Uh, no, not at all. That's good. That's good. <laughs> I don't know if there's anything I can do to help that. <laughs> All right, we'll just move on. So, orchestrating Puppet. Okay, so the M, -Coll M Collective it can be used to control your Puppet daemon out in your environment. So a good reason to use it that I find is the, the performance, I probably, I think I stole this from some other, like probably Puppet Labs documentation, so it's very well written. Um, <laughs> the performance of a Puppet Master is related to the max concurrent Puppet nodes that are applying to catalog. M Collective is aware of this. So the whole thunder and herd effect and the whole concurrency situation in your environments, if you have a lot of nodes talking to your master, um, M Collective is a very, very good uh, tool to use to help with that. Uh, and it can determine how many servers are currently enabled in applying your catalogs, which I'll show later. There's commands that you can do to see how many servers are actually communicating currently with the master. It'll report back if the nodes are um, applying catalogs. It has a lot of information. And here's the MCO puppet command. So you use the MCO help, and then on the puppet command, it gives this is a like truncated because there's a lot of information, but this is a basic example of what the MCO puppet command can do. Um, you can do a lot of like really awesome things. You can enable and disable your nodes, you can run them, you can run them all, and all these different actions here too. You can get a status in your environment. I'm going to show a lot of this coming up, so I'm going to move through this one rather fast. All right, so your controlled nodes, um, you can query and run Puppet from any node that has the client installed. This is a basic example. Like I ran all these little environment I have, so you can just do an MCO Puppet count. It'll tell me how many nodes are enabled, how many are disabled, how many are doing runs, currently stopped. So in this, in this instance, when I actually ran this command, um, nothing was running. So I'm going to exit out again. I can't see this on my screen, so. So if I do an MCO puppet status right now, same, oh, that looks terrible. Can you guys see that? Okay, so if you do, let me do that again. What's that? I did three less. Well, let me get some, let me get smaller. Okay. The, the top was just the progress bar, which you can, it just shows how, like the, the progress of this, uh, the broadcast. So you can see that there's nine nodes in the environment. It's a very, very, very fast, so it'll just show that the example that I have, there's just nine nodes out there. And I'm going to actually do a puppet run, so when I come back to um, the other examples, this will have information. Okay, cool. I just ran nine puppet runs all the same time. Okay. That was an example of that command running, and then we'll go on. And this is the puppet status command. So after you do a puppet run, you can actually see the number of even more information on this one. In the top it just shows the nodes, how long the it, it's been since the last uh, run has been completed. Here's an example of a few puppet commands. You can do the puppet run once, which is, it, it, it could be, that could be very dangerous if you have like a thousand nodes in your environment. You run that without filters. I have an example of that coming up. Uh, but the, the no-op run is nice. You can do actual no-op runs from, the, from M Collective. And if no-op is actually set, you can no-op the no-op. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty <laughs> funny command. But. And then you can do splay runs too. So you can splay your environment out, your runs. Okay, so here's an example of the filters. These are very, very important. 
So you have many filters that are available to you. You can use class filters. Any of the classes that are in your environment applied to your nodes are available to you from the classes.tax file that Puppet uses. Uh, but any of the factor facts that are out there um, on any of your nodes, you can leverage as part of your filters as well. Um, you can do identities. You can match upon uh, node regular expressions even. So this is just an example at the bottom of what it looks like if you forgot to use a filter. So I basically wanted to run mcollective run once on that node. And you notice that the progress bar has 9 slash 9, <laughs> which causes this, the thundering herd effect. So if you have, like, say you have 500 nodes in your environment and you do a puppet run, there's going to be 500 nodes trying to talk to your master all at the same exact time. Due to the nature of mcollective and broadcasting out, they're all going to come thundering back to you and your node is not going, or your master's most likely not going to be able to handle that. I did that in my previous position. That's that's not why I play previous. <laughs> <laughs> it, it helped us to, it helped us actually tune the puppet master though, but not to be able to handle like some like seven hundred puppet runs all at the same time, just get refresh on the console like over and over and over again. So all right, so here's an example of what it's like to invoke actions with filters. So on the first one, I'm using the OS family fact to find any of the nodes in my environment that are red hat. Uh, the second one is the same thing, just the long form. I need the operating system major release five, so I can leverage with just that simple dash f or dash f with fact. I can leverage any of the facts in my environment to control and collect it with. And it's not just limited to the find command. You can use a lot of the other. These filters are available to most of the puppet or uh, m collective commands. And you can see on the other one, it's the classes is pretty nice because you can actually do your your puppet runs, your node discoveries with the classes that are applied applied in your environment. And if you do ever run into a problem with that, make sure that you have, I think by default, Puppet actually does apply the classes.txt file. Var lib Puppet classes text for open source, I believe, and then the uh, enterprise is var opt PE Puppet lib classes text, I believe. I'm not sure. Just locate classes text, but it's in there. I'm sure that, is everybody here familiar with classes.txt? That runs a puppet? Yeah. Okay, let me just, I'll show it real fast. <laughs> this is basically just a list of, well, that looks, you can't really see that. There you go. Uh, that's a list of all of the classes that are currently applied on this node, and you can leverage that with uh, the M collective filters. Which is pretty nice. So if you have like, if you want to just do a puppet run on your SQL nodes, and you're using the SQL class, you can just do a dash capital W and apply it to your MySQL classes or any of these other classes. Okay. So this shows a basic agent run. So this is just a run all with a concurrency of one. So after the run all command, you can tell how many nodes you want to do a puppet run. And this is an example. It does the puppet agent one time demonize color equals false um, run. And you can tell it as many times as you want or how much concurrency you want. So you don't have to do one. You can do five, ten. That's another one that probably looks real bad. I thought this was like a great idea to put the screenshots on here. I had it originally as the text and now I regret changing it. But it just shows, I'll, I'll show you this live then. Okay, so you can do PN. Oh no, that's Pub Enterprise. There we go. I'm so used to Pub Enterprise now. It's my current position. We have Pub Enterprise. So this is, uh, here we go. So it just shows your, your config retrieval times and how many resources you're managing in your environment. So there's 119 resources being managed and it's rather fast because there's only nine nodes in this environment. When you get to, the slide that I had actually was, I think from my work, so there's like 1.1 thousand resources being managed, so it's a little bit slower. Now this is another cool one which is, looks so bad. Um, this is the plotting performance that uh, the plugin that Ari, who actually wrote M Collective, wrote. So you can plot with GNU plot uh, the um, 
config retrieval times and a lot of other resources that are in your environment you can use this for. So you, you can't see this, I apologize, but it is basically on the y-axis you have the number of nodes and on the x-axis the config retrieval time. So it's pretty nice because you can actually use this and then do a query in your environment for, for the nodes that take uh, a long time to retrieve their um, configs and then so you can diagnose and debug your environment pretty nicely with that. Okay, so Puppet Resources. This is this gets into like some customization of M Collective. By default, this is not enabled because this could cause a lot of sync issues in your environment. Anything that's available to um, Puppet as far as resources in your environment can, are concerned is available to this command if you allow it. So you can do Puppet Resource and then any of the resources in your environment to have M Collective execute those commands in your environment. <coughs> And I have that slide of the that's actually a board cube being destroyed because this is it's pretty powerful to have that. So it's disabled by default. So you have to actually whitelist any of the resources that you want up M Collective to be able to control. And that's why I have an example of it here with the define type of setting the puppet resource, allow manage resources, and the resource type whitelist. So I have the service only the service is enabled. And I'm gonna give an example of that right now. Does this look alright? Can everybody like see this or does it look really bad? Like as far as uh, visibility. Look alright? Alright. All right. And uh, that's the resource. Let's see what we Okay. This is hard to type. Okay, so I'm going to do MCO Puppet Resource Service Cups. Sure. Stop. Or running because I believe I have it stopped. I'm going to do a dash I to filter on the node. You can see that the resource on that DBO2 node got changed, and it gives you the summary that it was changed. So I want to do, revert that back. Oh, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Okay, so with that puppet resource plug command, with that the puppet agent plugin, you can control the resource. There's another plugin that Ari, that wrote M Collective, also wrote, and it actually can uh, query any of the resources or processes that are running on your node. So after you do this command, and you want to verify that it actually did stop without logging in, or if you don't trust the M Collective command. <laughs> You can do puppet MC or no. M C O resource. What is it? No, process. Sorry guys. Process. Okay. So with this command, MCO process, that's another plugin. I want to list the cups D on here and see what's going on with it. So you can see that it is actually right there. Yes, Pike is Puppet did another run and turn it back. Oh, it's actually running, yes. So I'm going to use the Puppet plugin again to stop it. Make sure. Stop that only right. Yes. So now it's changed to true. I'm going to run the process list again, and you can see that it's not on there. So these commands work really, really, really fast in your environment to enumerate information. And it's nice on this on the admin node, you can actually uh, script this out and use it throughout your environment without having to log into any nodes. Okay, back to the presentation. Alright. You can also enable and disable Puppet. So this is something we do at work quite frequently. So we make a change in one of our environments if we don't want Puppet to run. You can actually just do an MCO Puppet disable and the message is pretty nice too. So you can just say turn off all the things or I'm adding RAM to this to this cluster and whenever somebody goes to run Puppet, it'll actually report back Puppet, whatever your message is. You can say Puppet has been disabled on all these nodes due to hardware upgrades. And then you can do the same thing. You can do a Puppet enable right after you're done doing all of your uh, changes in your environment. This works extremely fast as well. So here's a couple of the miscellaneous plugins that I had. I, um, I've shown most of these already. This is just another process list one, uh, listing draw, or, uh, Java processes on this machine. This just is the MCO package command, which I believe is default on Puppet Enterprise if you install it. 
you can just you can actually install and remove and query the state of packages with this. So I just made sure the bash is on that machine. You can do inventories, which is very nice for our management. They love our inventory. So you can do anything that's in your environment. You can see that I truncated this again, so there's a heck of a lot of information. If you're on your node and you type um, fact or any of that that comes out is the same output that's going to be on here. So any of the facts that are on there. And you have your configuration management classes. So that's what the dash capital W class filter with them collective command can use. You can see what data plugins are available on that particular node. So this one has the agent, resource, fstat, uh, service, and puppet. And the agent commands that are up there as well. Those are all the different plugins available. Uh, so here's an example of doing an inventory report. You can feed a dash script uh, command to M Collective, and you can use this little inventory script that's available just to pull out some of your facts so you can get some example or uh, inventory out of your machines. So this just looks for anything that has the equal class applied, and I want to know what the IP address, operating system version, and host names are. And this is a just a screenshot of the Puppet Enterprise console. So any of the stuff that I just showed you outside of the resource control, I believe, is available with Puppet Enterprise. And you can actually control all of your nodes the same way that I just showed you, but from here. I did have demo time and stay away demo daemon. <laughs> but um, I was just I just mixed it in the rocks. I think that would, it was just a little more effective. But that's basically all I have, so that was 30 minutes, that's not bad. So I'll answer some questions. I hope that I gave them collective justice because it's a very powerful tool that uh, can really make your jobs a lot easier. Okay. Okay. Do we need a microphone or no? I, I don't need one. Oh, go ahead. Um, are they using the same ports for M Collective or mm -hmm. on, on the network ports that, so that you don't have to, you know, talk the firewall? And no. There's another port, it's 61 and 613, I believe. No, no, that's, we got that as one of the ports, 61 and 613. That's it. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Yep. TCP, GDP? TCP. Okay. Yes? When you're managing your M collective, like were you on your puppet agent or were you on your puppet master? Um, with this particular environment, I had a client node, so. <coughs> The way that I configured the open source version, um, where is this? I'll show you a picture. Where the heck is this? Hold on one second. Right here. Um, I had a separate client node on here that was able to broad that talked to the middleware, and the middleware actually ran the puppet master. Is, 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 is the puppet master. But you don't have to do it that way. You can have the M collective uh, client on the middleware as well. You can have it all in all in one or you can separate out all your components. This particular environment, I use the open source version, so all my, um, my client lives separate of the puppet master. But that's not necessary. And with puppet enterprise, that's not true. So they are all the same. When you were executing a Ruby script, where, where did that Ruby script live? Up in the home directory of DM Collective Admin User. On the <coughs> servers or on the client? Or on, the M, on this guy. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Go ahead. Uh, do you have any Windows experience? Ah, yes. It works pretty much the same way. Like So you can control the resources and the puppet team in the same way that you can um, with your Linux and Unix nodes. What about like, some of the plugins that list out processes? <coughs> Those I don't have experience with, so I'm not quite sure if those work or not. If that's one of the public guys. And if it doesn't, I mean, it's Ruby, so you yeah, can extend yeah. the Ruby. Ruby can definitely get a process list, and it just may not be nice and convenient out of the box. Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Well, from an auditing perspective, is NCO logging? Yes, yes, in var log, everything is in var log. You can even pipe it to uh, syslog and then feed everything to uh, log stash or your logging um, infrastructure as well. Is that on the client, the middleware box? Um, I believe it's on actually every component of the architecture, so everything, it, it logs everything. And you can, in the server config, um, you can tune all of those options. It's a very, very tunable. 
And there's even a log stash plugin that will send and ship everything out to your log stash environment. When, uh, when you use them to Larry, uh, a good way to kind of wait completion or open completion or what you do that? Um, you mean, so you're saying like if you if you do a puppet run, you want to wait, for, what do you want to wait for? Like the puppet run to complete to return your results? Yeah. Um, M Collective only gets the results, I believe, if the puppet runs. It does, then you do other commands for discovery of what happened on the node. Like it's not going to report back which resources failed unless you do a different discovery. Um, if you try to run it again on the same node and Puppet is still running, it will tell you that, that Puppet is currently running on that node. So it won't trigger another Puppet run. <laughs> right. When you run the M Collective against maybe 200 servers and you want to get the results back, how does uh, how does M Collective collate the results? Um, Do you get 200 files? You get 200 sets of results, and then you've got to pass it, or is it does does the system present it as a report? Um, I believe it presents it as a report to M Collective, the M Collective command. On your nodes, it'll be the same as like your Puppet Run reports. So if you have the Puppet Dashboard and you do your M Collective command, the Puppet Dashboard will return the results of what happened, and then you have your... And then you export that out to, if somebody wants to make Excel or anything like that. Yes, yes. There's uh, one, one additional feature that... <laughs> oh, wait. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, in newer versions of M Collective, you can also do direct addressing in batch sizes. So if you wanted yeah. to stagger yeah. every yeah. command you want to run on, like so if you have 200 nodes, you only run it 10 at a time, you can pass arguments to the client to yeah. indicate that, but that's only in the newer versions. Yep. Yeah. Yes? How well does uh, M Collective scale? Uh, it's, it's actually scales very well because you could break, like I was showing before, you could break out all the components for scaling. Um, and if you have a lot of nodes, you can separate your collectives out into sub-collectives. I know a lot of shops that have multi-data centers will provide sub-collectives in each of those data centers for, for better control and scaling. So, so a lot of nodes being hundreds, thousands? I would assume once you get that big, it's going to be thousands. But right now, like we have it, currently in my position, we have around... 400 plus nodes in there, and it's lightning fast. ActiveMQ is, is, is really, it's very robust, it's very fast. <coughs> Just crash this a few times. Anybody else? <laughs> right. um, is it possible to export the results of every um, report that's run? Like, say, for instance, if you wanted to go back and time, maybe a couple of months ago, to actually see which report failed, what failed, and, you know, is it possible to like, export that into maybe an Excel file or something? Uh, well, that's just going to be your Puppet, uh, the reports on each of the nodes of the Puppet Master, Puppet DB, you can export all of those. You can probably do it in Excel if you want. But all those reports are going to be sent to your Puppet Master, stored in Puppet DB, so those reports are always available for your Puppet runs, because this is just running Puppet. Essentially, you're using a collective to control the puppet team. So, yeah, same, same, same principle. So it'll be on your puppet masters in the database. No reports. Thanks, John. Thank you.